All right, there's no better way to uh, teach this than just go through some examples. So here's our first example. Um, a medical director of a large company is concerned about the effects of stress on the company's younger executives. According to the National Center of Health Statistics, the mean systolic blood pressure for males between 50, 35 and 44 years old is 128. And the standard deviation is of this population is 15. The medical director examines the records of 72 male executives in this age group and finds their mean systolic blood pressure to have an X bar of 129.93. Is this evidence that the mean blood pressure for all the company's uh, younger male executives is different from the national average? Well, uh, we'll take a look at this. The first thing we need to do is write our hypothesis. And our first one is that our null hypothesis, we want to see if our mu is equal to our former mu. So the mu for the population, which is 128. Now, our alternative hypothesis uh, is, it, they're asking, is this evidence that the mean blood pressure for the company's younger males is different? They didn't say greater than, they didn't say less than, they said different. So our, our alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 128. Remember, we have to define what mu is. Mu is the mean blood pressure. for all uh, of the company's uh, younger, ma younger male executives. So if you took all of them, that would be the true mean of all of them. So the next part we have to do is we have to look at the conditions and see if it meets. Now, I don't remember. Does this come, does this come from a random sample? Um, it doesn't say random sample. It just says it looks at um, 72 males. So we don't know if it comes from the random sam sample. So data don't come from a random sample. So that tells us that's going to be hard to generalize. Uh, this information to more people. Uh, and then we have to check uh, normality. Normality will be pretty easy since uh, n is greater than 30. So in this case, n is uh, is equal to, was it 72? Which is greater than 30. Um, the central limit theorem tells us that sampling distribution is approximately normal. And then our last one, independence. Now, I don't know the number of executives on hand, but it passes if there's more than 720 executives. So we can just, sit, that seems like a lot, but uh, we can just write, uh, we assume there are more than 720 executives in this company. And when we do that, um, if that's true, then it's independent. If not, then it's not independent. So now we look at the calculations. So now, for the calculations, uh, we're 
first check out our Z statistic. Or actually, let's just do that. What we'll do is we'll do the probability that our X bar is uh, so our X bar is 129. So when we draw this out, if the mean is 128, we're gonna have 129.3. It's two sided, so we're going to look at both of these. So we need to look at two times the probability that my x is greater than 129.3. So that means it's two times the probability that my z score is greater than 129.3 minus my mean of 128 divided by my standard deviation for the population, which is 15 over the square root of n, which is 70. So at this point, we take out our trusty calculator and we take 129.3 minus 128, and then I take 15 over the square root of 72, and 1.3 divided by that, we get a z-score greater than 0.7354. And then I do a normal CDF from that answer to infinity. And I get 0.23. And so our p value is 0.46, which is pretty high. So then when we interpret, uh, since p value of 0.46 is higher than alpha equals 0.05, we can not reject the null. And we can write h0 or null hypothesis. So if we can't reject the null, that means we don't have evidence that this is true. So our next statement is we don't have evidence that uh, the mean blood pressure It's different for these executives. And there you go. That's an entire uh, significance test.